Today on the Radical Retro Rewind Podcast, we continue the Summer of the Dead with 1985's Return of the Living Dead. It's time to get radical. Ensure all residences are secure with all doors and windows firmly locked and barricaded. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Not people. Brains. They're us. We're them. They're us. Oh my god. You are dead. Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. The pain of being dead. Were you bitten? Oh. Were you bitten? Did any of the blood get in your mouth? They have overrun us, you know. We're in the minority now. Something like 400,000 to one by my calculation. The father, my father, always say, when the earth spit out the dead, they will come back to suck the blood to the living. When there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. It's another one for the fire. Welcome back, Radical Ones. How is everybody? I hope your summer's been as good as ours. As always, I am your host, Radical Ryan Hunter, and I am joined once again by everyone's favorite brother and mine, David, for one of our favorites. Welcome back, David. Hello, everybody. I'm feeling the summer vibes. Now, have you also felt the death? I mean, we've, we've had a lot of dead things going on here. I, I am feeling reanimated every time we talk about. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And nothing gets David more reanimated than the pain. The pain of being alive. <laughs> You're right. Everything hurts. <laughs> Don't get old, people. Hold on to your youth. Hold on. Let me tell you something, people. If Isabella Rossellini presents you with a vial that's glowing, take it. Take it, take it, take it. Take the death becomes them formula. Or maybe just take half. Maybe spread it around. Give it to a few people that you know so you have some people to hang out with you. Ooh, you know what? And Radical Ones, we would give you the formula because we want you to hang around with us. We want you to stay. Listen to our podcast for all eternity. That's your punishment. <laughs> That's your punishment. They only come out at night. They're mean, rude, and dead. Not them them. There's a hundred of those things out there. How many did you say? A hundred? The dead are refusing to remain buried. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We're gonna call the boss. They've come back to life. They're hungry. And they're not vegetarians. The graveyard out there is full of people coming out of the ground. We have a little problem. What the hell is going on there? Rabbit weasels. What? More brain. Do you have They're back from the grave and ready to party. It's party time! The Return of the Living Dead. Return of the Living Dead 1985. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, this has its roots all the way back to the original Night of the Living Dead when George Romero co-wrote the movie with John Russo. Of course, we got Dawn of the Dead after Night of the Living Dead, so George and John came to terms that they were both going to make sequels from Night of the Living Dead. John could only make movies that use blank of the Living Dead title, and Romero got stuck with dead. So that's why we have Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, and not of the Living Dead. Dead in bed. We have that. There's one. a lot of death going on as we continue, as we're saying. So John Russo ended up writing a book called Return of the Living Dead, which has nothing to do with this movie at all. The movie was bought, and then the script was rewritten four times. So really, John Russo gets a lot of credit for having been part of this but he really just supplied the novel and i guess this the name of return of the living dead but he kind of gets lucky because i have a feeling that romero really wrote more of night of the living dead as well 
So John Russo just gets lucky. But whatever the case is, he gets to do this. George got to continue the Dead franchise. And here we are, four sequels and a cult classic later, Return of the Living Dead. David, what do you remember about this movie? Because you and Michael, brother Michael, had watched this for years. As a matter of fact, my earliest memory of this movie is you and Michael being at grandma's and me walking into that like foyer with the, the TV that she had and like seeing that graveyard scene and being scarred for life of the zombies coming to life again. So what do you remember? <laughs> There's so many things I remember. First of all, I remember that my girl, Stacy Q, is on the soundtrack and is played in the movie. Love Credited that song. as SSQ. Yes, love her. Always loved Stacy Q when she was on Facts of Life as playing Cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> when your tour comes to peak skill, I want a front row seat. Friends? Friends. <laughs> Doesn't it at all sound like a stripper's name, but anyway, I remember that. I like Stacy Q doesn't sound like a stripper name either. Oh, that's no, Stacey no, that could Q. be that could be that could be like Easy E and all right, you know, yeah, Lady okay. Kier or something else, Lady Gaga, Sandra O. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Sandra O. Oh. One thing also, characters in the film is an older gentleman. He's what I call the path mark man. Yes. So he used to, there used, there, there was a food, (laughs) I think we've talked, we've had to talk about this much before. So he was on commercials for a grocery store, store called Pathmark. And he would always have that booming voice that he would say things in like, shop at Pathmark or whatever. I remember that. Look for coupons in this holiday savings circular in Sunday's newspaper or at Pathmark. Save up to $1.70 on a half gallon of Breyer's ice cream, $1.69. Get two liter Pepsi, 79 cents. Nestle's morsels, an 11 and a half ounce bag, $1.59. Pathmark, where you're the one who's number one. Pathmark number one! I remember the comedy aspect of it. To me, I actually like this movie as well as the Night of the Living Dead 2 like the second one, just because there's a comedy aspect of it because of of that, that really endeared it to me. Obviously, there's scary parts of it. I remember the, the nudity as a child. Oh, my God. This woman. Anyway. Does she have on leotards? She, she or just leg has warmers? on leotards. Or leg, leg warmers? She has on leg warmers? What does she have on? They're like mid-leg warmers, though. They're oh. kind of like in they're, between. They're back. I see a lot of people wearing those things, you know. Were they they're like considered chic. chaps? They're boho chic. Anyway, I, I don't. You know, she, what is she at the gay rodeo? She might as well be at this point. Do you recognize her, David? She's from Night of the Demons. She's that woman that one of the girls in the beginning, she has that costume on the blonde hair. But she's in Night of the Demons. She's one of the girls in Night of the Demons. So she gets typecast. The one with the lipstick that looks like a baby girl? She looks like whatever happened to baby Jane. Yeah, that's her. That's trash. I mean, literally, that's trash. That's her name <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> Shall we just go into it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's on trash. That note, You're that's, trash. That's trash. She plays Suzanne in Night of the Demons. Suzanne. So as funny as this movie is, David, it does get extremely serious at parts and extremely, I will say, terrifying. We talked about this in a little bit. Not not quite the same caliber, but we did nothing but trouble when you, me, and Rob did it together how there's a dark side of it that until i hadn't seen it more recently i never noticed how they're murdering people it's like so yeah there's a comedy aspect of it but also there is there's a lot of a lot of depth a lot of like like true horror true so i mean it has that it's a dark comedy but honestly it could just really be a horror movie with comedic aspects of it because everything is done in Honestly, it's done in a horrific way. It's not played for laughs. I mean, yeah, there's some things that are played for laughs, but not a majority of it. So, David, just the the basic premise is July 3rd of 1984 at the Unita Medical Supply Warehouse, Foreman Frank tries to impress new employee Freddy, Tom Matthews, or Tommy Jarvis, by showing him military drums of toxic gases called troxin, 
that wind up in the basement of the building. Freak accidentally unleashes the toxic gas in one of the barrels, which melts the cadaver inside and reanimates another cadaver stored in a meat locker. And then we also have a group of punk rockers that are friends with freddy tom matthews who is one of them is his his girlfriend tina which i always say david where did she meet this group of people <laughs> did they go to high school together and she was kind of well like, i mean they might the be actress? they might be 30 year old actors pretending to be doing the 90210 treatment gabrielle especially teen i think tina's a little older in her <laughs> so so yes yeah, so the thing the, what's funny about this is that there's this talk between Frank and Freddie and he's trying to impress him and he's like showing him all these like body parts and, and he makes, he kind of like does like a, a little funny things like, Oh, look at her. She's like, makes fun of the things and just having a good time with it. He also talks about night of the living dead. He makes reference to night of the living dead. He talks about how this chemical fell on bodies and they started to move around. Frank. Yeah. Kid. What's the weirdest thing you've ever saw in here? It. I have seen weird things come and I have seen weird things go. But the weirdest thing I ever saw just had to cap it all. Oh, yeah? <laughs> What's that? Let me ask you a question, kid. Did you see that movie, Night of the Living Dead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one where the corpses start eating the people, right? Sure. What, what about it? Did you know that movie was based on a true case? Oh, come on, you're shitting me, right? I ain't never been more serious in my life. That's not possible. I mean, they showed zombies taking over the world. Well, they changed it all around. What really happened was, back in 1969 in Pittsburgh at the VA hospital, there was a chemical spill, and all that stuff kind of leaked down into the morgue, and it made all the dead bodies kind of Jump around as though it was alive. What chemical? 245 trioxin, it's called. It was to kind of spray on marijuana or something. And the Darrow Chemical Company was trying to develop it for the army. And they told the guy who made the movie that if he told the true story, they'd just sue his ass off. So he changed all the facts around. So what really happened? Well, they closed it all down, see? And the army shipped all that contaminated dirt and all those dead bodies out. And they kept it a secret. So how come you know about it? <laughs> what typical army fuck up? The transportation department got the orders crossed. And they shipped those bodies here. Instead of to the Darrow Chemical Company. And then he also, believe, I swear to God, he mentions the Dow Chemical Company. It does he? Yeah, that's what they're putting in all our food, people, already. Tonight! Yeah, and I just put down Curiosity Kills the Cat. I said the potatoes in the basement. I actually said it came from the basement with Radical Ryan. With the dust that happens on some of those boxes I bring up, David, I wouldn't be surprised. So the chemical, they open, they accidentally get this container going. They get knocked out from this horrible gas that shoots out at them. Which smells evidently terrible. Freddie says he's never smelt anything like that in his life. And David, I actually have to say, Frank, played by James Karen, is really my favorite part of this movie. His screams that he does through the entirety of this movie, it might sound annoying on paper, no, I think a, a gentleman great. screaming, but it is so funny. Every time he's just, oh God, oh, like everything he does is just it's just so dramatic and it's amazing it's it's that's the hysterical part it's my children they're dramatic they're just so dramatic <laughs> you're raising the future frank of you need a you need a supply i, company. I, I, I need a, I, I do i might need some medical supplies to keep myself going <laughs> yeah frank is very endearing even when he's tortured because he's he's contaminated with this chemical it's an it's it's a really i i have to tell you it's a very interesting plot of how everything goes down i actually really like it so we'll, we'll play with that a little bit more. So, you know, they, they, they get these body, this, the, the, the chemicals, and they realize that things are coming back to life. 
including a cadaver that's for medical purposes. purposes. Right. They, can, they sell medical skeletons. He was saying teeth from India, things like a that. Half, dog. A half of a dog. Yeah. And which the dog is barking. At the, that's a funny part too. Sad, but funny. The dog is like barking and he's beating it with a clutch because he's freaking out. And it's like dead dog. Like, Make it and the dog's going, hur, 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 like, like heal, heal doggy. He, it's, it's terrible. But when it's they funny. beat it, it's, David, but it's funny. It as sounds hell. like they're hitting a squeak, like a dog squeaky toy almost too. I mean, it is played I don't condone. I don't get off. I have three beautiful puppies that I love. My little babies, my, my babies before I had my babies. I yeah. don't condone it, but it's, it's a funny comedy thing for me to watch. Cause they're like, Oh God. Oh God. Ah! <laughs> they're hitting it with a crutch. It's almost like a, like a physical comedy thing. Like a, I love Lucy ridiculousness the way they, well then, and then when, especially when they call the owner of this company Bert, oh, uh, he clears his throat. Frank, uh, we have to call the owner. He's like, call the police. He's like, no, no, not the police. We'll call the owner. He clears his throat. Drink some water. Oh, what's the, does what's his, hair the, what's too, his right? name? What's the name of the owner? He's like Bert Wilson. Oh, Bert, Frank here. We have a bit of a problem. Very calm. Meanwhile, they're they're all messed up. We gotta call the cops! No, 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 you don't want to call the cops? You know what the cops will do to this company? Who cares about the company? Well, think of my reputation! Of your reputation! Think! Think! What about the number on the side of the tank? The one that said to call in case of an emergency? No, that's the army! You don't want the goddamn army around this place! Yeah. Think! Well, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We're gonna call the boss. Bert, Frank, we have a little problem. He starts spraying an air freshener too, like a Febreze, but like a like a Glade can to cover up the smell. <laughs> and they're and he's just they're coughing and they're spraying it and breathing it in. Oh, it or is, was it Lysol? I don't know. We, we spray it was Lysol. We spray, it was Lysol. Well, listen, I don't. Back in the day, I would spray everything with Lysol too. But it was just funny. This whole stock room is he's trying to get rid of the odor of this chemical by just spraying Lysol. It's like I know, instead of opening a window or anything like that, they can't even breathe to begin with. I think it, it's just he's endearing. He really is, Frank. So they also have the setup of like we were saying the punk gang is waiting for freddy to get off of work and they go into that cemetery david that is basically it's yanita the medical supplies this cemetery and then evidently we find out later a mortuary morgue where crematorium ernie what do you think about this whole setup as well i think that ambiance works for this movie because it is in this one area and it's a creepy area I, because yeah. what do you got a cemetery a medical supply building and a, a crematorium i feel so. like it's a burnt out part of town when you mm. when they go into the cemetery which is first of all i have to say the funny part is so freddie and tina are like the most normal i guess if you want to say it of the group when i see freddie and tina I, they remind me more of like i don't know Oh, like they probably listened to the cure they weren't they're not so dark they're a little ska maybe i don't know like <laughs> they have some morrissey they listened to morrissey yeah. and they felt a little depressed and they, they came but they, they came like are this. really nice and they're not mean spirited trash is ridiculous so they like let's see the cemetery and they're like they first of all they get this other guy this big guy who's kind of cute even though he's all chained up he's a chain hang he's a nice build buff built guy his name is suicide so suicide is like why do you only call me when you need a ride because poor suicide and suicide is set very deep man he's like i have deep feelings and emotions and he's got like chains around his neck in his little leather outfit he's he's like i said he's a good looking guy so they see the cemetery and they're trying to waste time before Freddie gets off of work and they're like, let's go into the cemetery and, and, and Tina and stuff is like, no, I don't think so. And Trash is like, oh, let's do that. Like she does this weird. She is dramatic. Think about her with her whole, her death kick too. Because doesn't she say, David? Yeah. I like death. She talks about. I don't know where things She like talks that. about. So they go into the cemetery. The cemetery is not kept up at all. You can tell this also alludes to the fact that this area is like a no pun intended a dead zone like a burnt but doesn't area. it work that gate that cemetery gate is really i mean bring in the ambiance resurrection by the way cemetery it's yes. cold it's definitely creepy they start talking about death and trash says did you ever think about dying <sighs> and she's doing this like sexual i i have this <laughs> what does she say dream of men or, old or men a nightmare of, just or of pulling of at dream. me and biting me and then she takes her clothes off and starts dancing on top of a tomb. Do you ever fantasize about being killed? Never. 
Do you ever wonder about all the different ways of dying, you know, violently? I wonder, like, what would be the most horrible way to die? I try not to think about dying too much. Hmm. Well, for me, the worst way would be for a bunch of old men to get around me and start biting and eating me alive. Did you notice, though, how she even comes off the convertible when they go into the cemetery? She has to go from the top, scoots her with her legs open down the roof of the car as her legs are Doesn't open. Doesn't everybody do that? I, I mean, after this, this is like a bizarre pink ladies and T-birds where you're like, how did Tina get into the, the pink ladies with this group? Tell me about it. Freddy. So what do you think about those trashes and they're like, oh, she's naked again? Because I could totally see that this is that girl that they know. She's really like into this scene and she gets naked all the time. She's like, she has no need to have an excuse. They also, and then like the, the girls are like, oh God, again, like she, this is ridiculous. Like they're like this, this slut is uh, on the tomb now dancing. Like we need this. But she has her, what her, her choreography ready. Cause she evidently, she knows what to do on top of that, that tomb. She does her, her sex dance. Listen, back in the day, I... Look, we're getting, we're getting really, getting even more edgier. It started with John Waters a few months ago, and now we're talking about... Now we're dancing dances. on tombs. We went from we're dancing... dancing on tombs. We went from dancing in the rain to hoes dancing on tombs. What will we get to next? By next year, my God. So anyway, back at Unita, Bert shows up. <sighs> Thank God. And this is another classic scene because the corpse that's banging now reanimated in the, the meat locker, I guess, that was hanging. They're like, we have to get rid of the evidence. So Bert's like, open that door. And he's like, Frank, you're going to have to kill this thing. And he's like, oh, God. In that movie, they destroyed the brain to kill him. Is that what they did? The brain. Right. Yeah. What do doctors use to crack skulls with? Surgical drills. Here, hold this, Frank. Oh. Now listen to me, both of you, very carefully. Freddy, you gotta open that door. Come here, you stand right over here. Frank, right here, and when it comes out, you brain it with that axe. Oh, oh Jesus! Jesus! Well, how am I gonna stop it from loading? <laughs> What's on my with you, Frank? Fred, come here. Get down there. Please, stand by the door. It's gonna be all right, son. All right. I don't think I can do <laughs> this, Bert. Well, you damn well better. You got us into this. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Right, 20, 22 right. Oh. Be brave, Frank. God damn it. Four left. Ten right. This whole scene, so David, the corpse gets out it's a yellow naked corpse because they said you know the movie night of the living dead says to you know get rid of the brain so they attempt that this does not work the the normal zombie rules they basically are never ending dead even burning we don't even know because it releases the chemical but basically the body every part Wiggle. remains alive it's wiggling and wriggling yeah and you can't get rid of it but when they cut off the top of this corpse's head and he's running around it's hysterical too i mean it's a it's a scary scene in some ways but the way this body's running around with these hands in the background too and they're just Looks like, like a foam screaming. thing it's funny it's, yes. it's a comedy it's funny it's just funny as hell and just frank screaming and screaming all over it every time he just opens his mouth it's hysterical this is actually a great scene too because bert looks and he says Ur but by the way bert and ernie I never put two and two together until this point. Bert looks over and says, Ernie works late on Fridays, which I like. Again, this is set up. It's a dead weekend. It's night. Ernie works late at the crematorium. So they decide to bring this over to him and they call it Rabbit Weasels. Rabbit Weasels. <laughs> Rabbit Weasels in the bag. What the hell is in those bags? Rabbit Weasels. What? What the hell are you doing with a bunch of rabid well, weasels? I was trying to explain to you, Ernie. You know, they came in as part of a ship, and of course they weren't supposed to be rabid, you know, but you know how these things happen. No, I don't. How do they happen? Well, watch out, watch out, Ernie. Don't get bit. Yeah. Anyway, we got them, and we need your help. How? We got to get rid of these things. Well, why didn't you call an animal shelter? Well, word, get out and hurt my business. You know, that's a bad scene, rabies. I don't think so. I mean, so what? You don't run a pet store. So some lab animals got rabies. Come on, guys, 
taken to the pound. Well, I just can't do that. You gotta, you gotta take my word for it. What the hell do you want me to do? You have a crematorium, right? You want to burn them? Yeah, that's what I had in mind, actually. That's cruel. Well, I can't think of anything else to do, Ernie. You, 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 you just can't burn animals alive. It's just too hideous, isn't it? At least let me kill them first. Take them out in the parking lot and put them out of their misery. Well, I don't think that'd work, Ernie. I don't, I don't understand what's going on, but why not? Ernie, I have to say, is another likable character for me. He's funny. He's Honestly, him. Bird is too. I think everyone in this movie is kind of like, they're, they're all stands out in, in their own ways. I feel like Bert is not as likable as the other, though, because he's he's definitely talking about his own personal interests. He had these containers. Yes, he, he if they had left them alone, and nothing would have happened. But eventually, even the best containers leak. Well, these got, you just hit it. I mean, Frank just literally slapped it, and it, the gas just flew out. My God. So, so, yes, yeah, so they cut up the different body parts, maybe whatever dogs they have to collect, whatever they put in these oh in separate hefty bags, and they bring them over to burn these rabbit weasels. They ask him, after saying it's really cruel, he'll shoot the animals instead because he would think that's horrible to do to them, burn them alive, you think, and, which is really a moral thing. They're living, of course. They're, he, assuming he's assuming they're living creatures, sick or not. So then they explain to him what really happened, and he says he's going to do him a salad and he's going to burn the burn it. But he said even the heart, everything is going to so he says we'll turn it up he's like well what about the bones we'll turn it up even higher so he basically takes all the stuff in the hefty bag loads it up and burns it now the, there's a funny part of this where F frank says frank does not like ernie for some reason a little bit or he's just getting cranky yeah. he's like he's like big favor i could operate that myself well you're not the mortician so really frank what are you complaining about he's like can we trust that bastard <laughs> So Frank is a little cynical of Ernie. I don't know why. Maybe he's jealous. And he's like, and then Frank's like, I, I have to call my wife. I have to call my wife. Right? Big favor. I can operate that myself. Well, what the? That's funny. So Frank just, I love Frank. Honestly, I think he's hysterical. So they burn, the, they burn all the things and the, the smoke goes into the air. And guess what starts happening? It starts raining. The music, though. This yeah. is when we get that Return of the Living Dead <laughs> music. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. And the, the montage, David, the whole montage of the rain. As a matter of fact, later on when we see it happening again, just the idea of anything that goes down into the ground you see the wood you see the feet of the corpse reality it was really good well done they did like little channels of like dirt almost like a ant house or whatever you want to say it's really cool so good i mean it's done really really well uh, the idea that these zombies david they're they're not moaning as per se as screams because we find out that the pain of uh, of being dead is painful for them. So it kind of makes it even more horrific that basically these things that are reanimated are being tortured until they're able to to eat brains, which is the only thing they eat, which is, was another way to copyright not having them be flesh eaters and like interfere with Romero's thing. We get a classic scene in between this, David, where Ernie and the gang has one of the corpses, the half corpse, well, yeah. The so, so there's a lot going on. They, they, they start they start coming up from the ground, and they, of course, the group is inside the cemetery with the acid rain. Acid it's rain. They try them. to go in, and she's she's yelling that it's burning her skin. Miss, uh, give me something. Trash. She tries to rip off the dress or something off of one of the other girls. <laughs> give me that. Because and of course. <laughs> Suicide's car has is leaking because he has a convertible that's all ratted and you know beat up. So they end up splitting up in certain directions. Some of them are gonna yes. go to try to find Freddy, and others go into the cemetery. And Miss Trash gets her fantasy come true, where the zombies come and grab her. She falls, typical horror movie where she falls. Oh, and I can't get up. Run, girl, run! And they end up biting her up. Run your leg warmers off. We forgot to mention that song, like David said, I've, uh, you know, earlier with from SSQ. Tonight we'll make love until we, until we die. die. I am not your enemy and surely not your friend, but share with me your morbid love. We are the living dead.
But what do you think that is? So she said old men only because they 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 couldn't have it as zombies actually in her, right? I mean, to the T of what her dream was. But what does that tell you about this character that that's her horror yet fantasy? And they're ripping me, my body. Or whatever. And are those tattoos? Are those Amanda Bine tattoos on her face? Or was that like like just drawn on? <laughs> maybe she used to, maybe she used to be a member of the Misfits from Gem and the Holograms. I don't know. She does have a pizzazzy kind of like, yeah, <laughs> look to her. <laughs> I don't know. But... So trash dead. Trash dead. <laughs> that trash. Goodbye, trash. Yeah, they do get separated, the team. But when they have that corpse on the table and she starts talking to them, this is when we learn that the zombies actually talk. <sighs> don't be afraid. I'm buzzing in the damn head. Man, you sure that thing's tired good? You can hear me. Yes. Why do you eat people? Not people. Brains. Brains only. Yes. Why? The pain. What about the pain? The pain of being dead. It hurts to be dead. I can feel myself. Rot. Eating brains. How does that make you feel? It makes the pain go away. And this is the famous, I guess, half corpse? She returns. She returns in the sequel as the screwdriver zombie. Because I guess she was, so, she was so memorable in the first one. But that's when they find out that it's not flesh, it's brains that the zombies are craving. Now, is there the joke here that they're going after not-so-smart people? Or... <laughs> no, I just think... I, I, there's... The... No, I just think that she's basically that's that that's their explanation of why the dead are coming back and they're coming for the living. I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it's actually pretty cool the way they describe twist. It. Yeah, like because the the zombies are compelled by pain to even do it. So would they if they were just coming back to life and they did not have pain? Would they just oh, wan wander aimlessly? Some of them have yes. Some of them have retained some sort of memory or vocal abilities, different like attributes, I guess, maybe depending on when they died or what stage of decomposition they're in or just the luck of the draw. So there's a lot of things going. They have ambulance. Every time the ambulance comes because they report that Frank and Freddie have been poisoned because and then the ambulance comes, the, the paramedics. Three times! The Three times! Yeah, the paramedics realize that Freddie and Frank are dead because they have no reaction, no pulse, no heart rate. Their temperature is a room temperature. They're getting rigor mortis. Pools of blood are, yeah. are forming on their backs. You see that they get eaten and then, then the zombies call for more paramedics. It goes, send more paramedics. Send more paramedics. Send more and so every time paramedics come and police come, they're being eaten. So there's Send more cops. There's no there's, <laughs> the second one. Yeah, there's no way to es there's really no way to escape. There's also parts with what's the guy and Tina ends up getting to the mortuary and they're like, they're dead, 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 dead. Oh, that's also a alumni of Friday the thirteenth. That's Spider. He's the one who plays damn enchiladas. Reggie the Reckless's older brother. Oh, some damn enchiladas! So Spider and Tina, actually, before the, the poop really hits the fan, they get into the mortuary and explain to Frank and Ernie and whoever that this is, you know, the dead are coming back to life. They're dead. No, they're really, they're dead. And they're like, are you on PCP? Or something. Yes! It's like, <laughs> they're like, no, they're dead people walking around. Yeah. And so... They get that link up because they know Freddy, and Freddy is now with the whole bar Ernie and, and, you know, Frank situation. So that the two of those groups meet. Yeah. And then you see Tina saying, 
what did you do to Freddy? He's sick, you know, yelling at them because they look horrible. And then you get the other aspect where the other two, I don't think, I don't remember their names, the girl and the guy. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say Casey and Casey and so you, Sus. So you get two, the other two characters. The others, the others. You get the other two characters who run to back to the Unita. Yes, You want yes. a Unita, you got to have a. And they end up finding the, see, now I'm messing this up because there's a part where they all rush in and that's how suicide gets killed. Well, um, earlier we did, I forgot to mention, David, yes, that suicide does get killed by the Tar Man, which is a famous zombie from Return of the Living Dead. He was the one that was in the barrel and they, he actually, they go down into the basement and. Here's a way, here's something funny. Tina goes down. Tina goes down and hides oh, in a yes. hides in a closet, much like yes, Laurie Strode, right? I got no, I wasn't getting I, Halloween. No, I wasn't thinking Halloween. I was thinking the the Return of the Living Dead, the re, the remake in 2004 when she hides in Andy's gun closet. Oh, of Dawn of Dawn. Okay, yes. I mean, sorry, Dawn of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead. And but the, did you notice Tar Man was using a metal chain to actually break down that? closet so yeah these zombies are smart very smart mr gobachov take down that wall that's wall awesome. yeah so but so, so they hear her screaming and that's when suicide goes down and he tries to help her and tarman bites basically his skull and they all scream and that's how we kind of get to the unita but yes these other two characters are separated at unita that, and that's at one of the points they say do you hear something and that's when all of those zombies are coming up i gotta say again such ambiance, really. This is a, cr again, creepy movie. For as much laughs as there is, it's film. It's like a perfect, I would say, Halloween movie. And they're wailing. They're Give wailing. Me. It's like the cries of the dead. The screams of the dead. We do see, though, they attempted to call the number as well on the can of Troxin which was led to a military operation that we saw in the beginning of this movie. It's just something that continuously happened until these canisters were found so there was there's someone in the military a, a assigned colonel to, that's assigned to. signed to just this mission of waiting for the coal now here's another thing have you noticed kind of backtracking there's there's two things i wanted to bring one you get to the point where freddy and frank they realize freddy and frank are going to turn into zombies they lock him in a chapel Tina decides to stay with them. At some point, Freddy starts to turn. He's like, I want your brain. The one thing that can leave this world is suffering. What, Freddy? What? Live brain! <laughs> and she starts screaming and this and that. So they end up opening the door and they end up throwing acid on Freddy's face. And you see Frank sneaking out behind yes! him. Yes! Still alive yes! with his little... Yes! clinched up like hands look like a little raptor like little pterodactyl hands the way that he's got them he, it's, it is in a comical way he's kind of doing like a cartoon creep away without anyone noticing but i also think that he's all just twisted up from rigor mortis i don't think he's well we did see right david as they were moving them it's painful for them to be moved so they're like screaming the whole entire time that they were putting them in this chapel because every movement hurts them yes and then you see frank go into the crematorium and he puts yes. his wedding ring on the thing on the the flip switch and he ends up burning he prays he says god forgive me and he goes in and burns himself so that's one thing then you see the fact that freddy is uber angry he's smashing through stuff he's trying to get in but they do at some point they call the canister and there's a, there's a colonel and you see him and he's kind of a jerk he's so mean to his wife yeah. they look they look at they're living in this lavish place and you get the at least i get the vibe that he is just this is, has been his whole military career chasing these canisters and he's miserable because he knows one the ramifications of it and two he still hasn't found them right right and he tells her we may never which is true like what are the odds they've been missing since 1960 something so at this point it's 84 when it's taking place so yeah they might never find them but he was lucky enough don't you know well, what do you think about that whole part? And, and we're jumping ahead a little where, again, the group gets separated. Ernie is left with Tina and 
they're kind of, which I think is smart because Ernie said earlier, we can get into the crawl space and, you know, no one can get into there. Problem with this whole thing is that if they had more time and there was enough space probably in the thing, they could have pulled the ladder up, but they were running against time. Freddie was breaking down the door. They were hustling, hustling, yes. hustling. To but I wouldn't even have thought that though. I would have thought like he did Ernie kicking the ladder out would have been, well, that's it. But yeah, these these zombies think and he can smell tina's brain that is actually i love you i love you tina now you must give me your brain you blinded me tina so what do you think that he ended up turning into a zombie before frank was it just the luck of the draw did he get more of the juice first the the gas maybe maybe frank because he's older didn't have his his heart isn't isn't beating quite as fast it didn't go through his body Ooh, faster look at you coming up with this this maybe he has idea. Pulmonary... the younger you are the stronger you are your body gets taken over faster well maybe he had, doesn't have a maybe he had some sort of pulmonary thing you know you never know i mean think about it that, that actually is true with poison goes through your body faster the, the faster your heart david i love these explanations you're giving us you know what when this actually happens i won't be turning into the dawn of the dead scientist with the patch going dummies dummies we're gonna be listening to david Dave's going to be like, well, let me just tell you. So, yeah, there's also a scene where this is where I kind of was like, what? You kind of get you get you get a scene where trash zombie trash is coming out from the cemetery oh, and she yes. attacks a homeless man with a grocery like a grocery cart. But her, it looks like she dislocated her jaw and like ate his whole face. Yeah, it looked like almost like it elongated, right? Yeah, it's a little bizarre. Like, it's almost like a Night of the Demons looking person, too. Like, yes, you're right. Like, yes, at that point, she was beyond the other zombies. Uber zombie. Like a mutant. Well, she did have, what, her song playing in the background tonight, but it kind of was, like, what, like, reverse, too? At some point, it was like, Rash, <laughs> I think it was like an echoing, almost like a haunting effect. Her nudity lives on then. Her nudity lives on. And then you see that the, the police are trying to put a barricade up and there's helicopters. So everyone thinks they're going to be saved in tandem with the military. Well, you find out the military is asking Bert, right? He's, he's downstairs yes. with the canister. He, they're asking him about what effects. And he's like, well, what effects? And where is this? And this is Kentucky, correct? This is, yes, you're right. It was filmed in California, but it's supposed to be Louisville. Louisville? Louisville, Kentucky, yes. On the morning of July 4th, by the way, so it was fireworks. <laughs> long story short, you get to the point where the, the police are overrun. The military ends up sending a bomb, a, a, some sort of a nuclear or some kind of weapon, to basically wipe out that area. Now, there's a few different things. One that I'll note, there's the part where the two people had hated each other. She's like, I have never liked you, but please hold me, which I thought was sad but sweet. You get the part where they can hear the, the sound of a bomb. like ee! Yes, because Ernie is going to... A, 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 actually shoot tina so she doesn't have to go through what's about to happen unknowingly yeah then you see that as the bomb is dropping in tandem you see this freeze frame thing where freddy breaks through the the the, oh, yes. the ceiling simultaneously yes it's like basically this is happening at the same time and it just so happens that thank god for the bomb i guess and they're wiped out but then you hear them that but then you have the military talking about how it was a successful operation strike yeah 
However, they asked about like rain. They didn't ask about casualties. They said it was very close to the target, but they said, "Oh, the, the shouldn't we shouldn't worry about the fires. The rain is putting it out right now." Oh my god, and when they say that and then you get the montage again, the music starts and we see that as the rain puts out the fires, more zombies in the resurrection cemetery are heard screaming in their graves, indicating that the evasion is about to begin again. So I guess all the zombies didn't even come out, though. At the well, that could also round. be yet another cemetery, right? It, it doesn't have to be. Even I mean, it, it says like... Resurrection Cemetery, but I, I think it's it could have been another cemetery, honestly, yeah. Well, I guess. What do you rain. think about this? Because in the sequel, which I guess could be almost like with Romero, that they're kind of not together, but they kind of are in the same universe. So either this happened and they did it again and it didn't rain the next time because in the sequel, it starts with a kid finding these barrels in his local town. So I wonder if the sequel, which we will be doing coming up very shortly, actually is part of this whole thing or is it just each one is a standalone movie like those terrible four and five that they made on the sci-fi channel oh my god rave to the grave and oh my god i'm actually in the middle of watching that i'm 25 minutes into rave to the grave oh and necro necro i already watched that too no whatever the hell that one is is that the one with necropolis the, the city necropolis ne with the with the robot body they gave it, or is that the sequel? No, that's the robot one, the Necropolis, with the one that looks like she's uh, a, the Borg from, yes! from Star Trek. Yeah, God help us. And Completely the same actor. This, but and that's a. I, I don't think we'll do those because I don't. I'm not really not that fond of them. But it's really funny because there's an actor in there that plays this rogue, like intelligent age. That's uh, the one that's trying to sell these canisters to anybody that will buy them. And every time he does it, everyone dies and he keeps trying to sell them anyway. But then on top of that, he always, he runs around like, <laughs> like Gargamel or something from the Smurfs. He's so weird acting. Like he's almost like, <laughs> my precious, I'm gonna do this. And he like sneaks around and stuff. It's so weird. It's like horrible acting on his part. Unless that's the way he really wanted him to play. He looks like He's no Frank, let's just say. He's no Frank. But that guy's an actor. He's done other things. Like, he's not unknown. But you know what's sad? These are one of those movies that if you're going to add to these, you got to make it either really You were going to say I ruin. You were said you were going to say if you could try to ruin these. <laughs> well, honestly. You were like, ruh, ruh, if you're going to ruh, ruh, uh, ruh. You're going to ruin these movies. You better do it in a funny make way. Them, yeah, make them funny at least. We know that part three became a more serious movie. That's the famous one, of course, when she's doing self-mutilation to not be her boyfriend in that one, the woman that comes back. But I know that's more of a serious take. And then they got the River Man or whatever, the homeless River Man. I, that movie is just another thing on its own. Because they kind of are trying to be funny, right, David? These, from what I remember, they were kind of comedy -esque. With the first two? Yeah, I feel like they Well, no, but these, no, but these, re these parts four and five that sci-fi made were they trying to make them comedy still or were they just kind of be like well this is just wackiness i, I don't Do know i want. don't know honestly because the one that i the first one necropolis or whatever it was called I, the guy lost his family i don't think it was that funny there was a part where some girl sleeps with with a security guard or something and she's like a hoe so i think to so they can sneak into the building <laughs> but i think other than that there wasn't it wasn't that funny so then they went more with building off part three slash we'll just use the title top, but they're totally different in. they're totally like completely different like you can totally tell this is like the Sharknado-esque treatment. They got the they got the Sharknado treatment more. Not the comedy aspect, they're just like the, the way it was filmed and the kind of, I don't know, kind of like thrown together for me. I mean, there was a cohesive theme, but I don't know. Well, David, that film, Necropolis, was called The Worst Cinematic Atrocity to Wound Your Retinas by Rue Morgue's 2016 Year in Review, and then Bloody Disgusting. It might seem like Necropolis offers nothing special to the viewer, but the film still suggests a simpler time in sci-fi and horror when a few gruesome effects, a cheap script job, and cast of pretty but bland stereotypes could make a Friday night's shock fest seem like the best time ever. So I guess that's true. It is a simple, but let's face it, they were trying to cash at the zombie craze of, of the 2004 at the time and they probably just said oh this is cheap. you're never going to recreate the original no no because that just it, you're never going to create the original and honestly i don't think you're going to get the the 80s flavor that the the return of the living dead one and two had like it's just it's just 
some things just you, you just can't recreate, honestly, no matter how you try. It's because there's, it's always like a cliche. Because back in the day, people were wearing leg warmers. People were wearing like fluorescent tones. Like, you know what I'm saying? When It's like when a trend comes back, when bell bottoms came back for a little while or this and that. It's not the same when it originally occurred because it was real to those people. It was fresh and right. new. Right. It's not a costume. Like, like you can't redo the Muppets. Now. You can't redo the Muppets. The fact that the Muppets, like, for example... The Muppet, the new one was was really nice and everything, but like Dark Crystal or something like. Even just the fact that everything was not CGI'd, everything was a puppet. You had to dispel belief, and they did some like did things that really were pretty amazing for what they were like. Even the Wizard of Oz, we've talked about this. They created the tornado with a plastic bag and some wind and stuff, and it for the time was absolutely amazing. Gorgeous. And you would never get that. You can do CGI, but honestly, like the movie with Helen Hunt, what was it, Twister or something? Or what was that? Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> stupid with the cow and this and that. I'd rather watch the, the the tornado from The Wizard of Oz. Anyway. But you're right. You you can't. It's, again, lightning in a bottle. And, you can't redo yeah, Goonies. You can't redo Goonies. You can't. You can, but you're not going to get whatever. that it, You know, lightning doesn't strike twice, they say. It might, but I don't believe it does. It, it just has to be the right actor. Like, the you know, when you listen to a song and you love a certain song, it could have been like, I watch these things on TikTok, for, definitely, for example, like when a song's been shopped around by all different people. Like, Baby Hit Me One More Time was supposed to be for TLC. See now, TLC men had done a bang up job of that song, but there would be no Britney Spears without that song. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like even if TLC did an amazing, like just like Waterfalls, I can't see any other group doing that and it being successful like it was with, you know, like T Boz is like husky voice and you know Left Eye with the rapping and all. Just it's just you can't recreate. It's just right place, right time, right artist. So, David, my God, we're not done with Return. We'll actually see the return of Frank and Freddy playing two different characters when we do the sequel. But I'm so glad that they did that. It's that, I want to call it that Dark Shadows formula. Here we go. American Horror Story would be the modern equivalent where you make the cast play different characters in the same thing, but they're playing different characters. But the funny part of it is that this is very much the same storyline. It's like in in American Horror Story, you have Jessica Lange doing all these different things, but she's only, she was only the, well, I, I guess she was only the Supreme once. But yeah. she was Jessica Lang though in every in every series. Oh, <laughs> stop it! Just stop don't get me it. on a roll. Don't get Not me on stop. Madison Montgomery this, this again. One, this one with his, they're just playing themselves. Well, what what else do you have to draw from when you're an actor? But yourself. Amen. I mean, you if go. you were if you were raising cattle in Texas and became a. <laughs> became an actor and they wanted you to play a role as a cowboy who, who raises cattle what would what where, where, where would you draw your passion from you already done that job get over yourself now i would play it the most theatrical cow re- that, just stop just seen. stop rhinestone cowboy <laughs> so yeah like but return <laughs> these are similar and there's actually spoiler alert there is a clip in the the next movie the return of the living dead 2 where he says this is like deja vu you me them and he means the zombie. So I think that I love that kind of tongue in cheek sort of like funny, you know, nod out, you know, nod to that the other movie. So, yeah. I love and put, putting them putting them back in together, doing a similar thing. I just wish, though, that they I could have seen them again. I would have seen them. I would have watched them again in the third movie. I agree. I wish they would have done that in the third movie and not taken that serious turn. Oh, nipples. Mutilation. Well, the other thing is The that... zombie had that Janet Jackson nipple ring from the from the Super Bowl. She <laughs> The Velvet Rope album? She had what? Some... <laughs> oh god. So radical ones, we will be back with more undeadness. Undeadness? Yeah. All oh, right. Next week. And you can always reach <laughs> twenty dollars. I'm convinced. That's all it takes for us. David at Universal Appeal 2020, all one word, as well as the Radical Retro Rewind Podcast, one word on Instagram, and we also update all the time on YouTube. If you'd like to leave a voicemail, a review, a comment, we would love that. We'll play it on the show. And what else, David? What else? What do the people need Press to know? Press the subscribe week? button. Oh, please. We need more viewers. We need to know that you people are listening, that someone's out there, that there has to be survivors someplace. 
Hello! Hello! <laughs> we have food and we have water and we will protect you. The cure of the undead is here. Please come to the, the Radical cure. Retro Rewind. We have the cure. And it, and we <laughs> and we don't And we will not be eating you we, like we, they do on the on the Walking yes, Dead. Yes, we are not terminus. We are the radical Terminus, retro, that's what We it was. are the Radical Retro Rewind and we are here and we are waiting. <laughs> Surely not your friend, but share with me your mom.